this video, we are going to prove the Hein-Borel theorem for metric spaces. In the setting of real numbers, the theorem was rather straightforward, a set is compact if and only if it is closed and bounded. We have already proved the same thing for Rn. However, for general metric spaces, closed and bounded sets need not be compact. We have already seen a couple of examples. So the key fact we need in addition is completeness and a notion called total boundedness. So let's first define total boundedness. This is a much stronger requirement than being merely bounded. It says the following, a set S subset of a metric space is said to be totally bounded, is said to be totally bounded if, if, for each epsilon greater than 0, we can cover, we can cover S by finitely many balls of radius, radius epsilon. Finitely many balls of radius epsilon will cover the set S and this can be done for each and every epsilon, however small it is, it doesn't matter. So I must give you an example, but instead I'll give you an exercise. Show that, show that any bounded subset, subset of Rn, Rn is totally bounded, is totally bounded. Okay, now what we are going to do is prove the Heinborel theorem for metric spaces. After I prove the theorem, I want you to think about non-examples of totally bounded sets and the hint is we have already seen examples of closed and bounded subsets of metric spaces which are not compact, use them to construct these non-examples. So let's state the Heinborel theorem and prove it. Heine-Borel theorem. Let X be a complete metric space. Let X be a complete metric space. Then a set K, K subset of X is compact if and only if it is closed and totally bounded. So this is a stronger statement in the sense that, I mean, it's not a stronger statement. It is a weaker statement than Heinborel theorem in the sense that the requirements, the hypothesis is stronger. So if you strengthen the hypothesis, the result will in general become weaker. So the strong form of the Heinborel theorem is simply not true for metric spaces. And one more remark, since uh, it should be rather obvious to you, I forgot to mention it. Any totally bounded set is automatically bounded. That should be obvious to you. So let's go with the proof. One direction is rather simple. The other direction requires a bit of delicacy or a delicateness. A bit of delicacy makes no sense. A bit of uh, delicateness. Now, first of all, observe that K is complete. Observe that K is complete simply because it is a closed subset of a complete metric space and therefore it's complete. Now let xn be a sequence in k. We are going to show that it has a convergent subsequence and use the fact that compactness and sequentially compactness coincide for metric spaces. Now without loss of generality which I abbreviate as w log we may assume we may assume that xn is not equal to xm if n is not equal to m. That is just passed to a subsequence such that this is satisfied. If it is not possible to meet this requirement, then uh, the result is already over. I mean, the proof is already over. This Xn will definitely have a convergent subsequence. So we are going to take the case where we can find a subsequence of Xn and remove repeating terms. We will get a subsequence. We are just re-indexing it and calling it Xn. This is just for convenience. The proof will become easier. Now, for a fixed k in the natural numbers, in the natural numbers, finitely many balls, finitely many balls 
of radius k of radius k say b uh, 1 k b 2 k dot 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 b uh, m k k cover k right we are starting off with a totally bounded set so given any of radius 1 by k sorry about that okay given any fixed natural number k we can find finitely many balls b1 k b2 k b m k k that cover k and each of these balls are of radius 1 by k now this m k in general will of course depend on k you may have to increase the number if you decrease 1 by i mean if you increase k 1 by k will decrease you may have to increase m k so i am not claiming that uh, this m k is in any way fixed or anything now suppose again this is just without loss of generality suppose b 1 1 1 uh, yeah uh, sorry about that i skipped a step so we have this sequence of distinct terms xn and b b 1 1 b 2 1 comma dot 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 b m 1 1 cover k right from our notation since since this set xn is infinite since this set xn is infinite infinitely many points infinitely many points of the set of the set xn xn is contained in contained in one of the sets one of the sets b 1 1 b 2 1 dot 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 b let me just uh, check back the notation b m 1 1 b m 1 1 ok simply because the set x n is infinite infinitely many points of the set must be contained in one of these sets this is just the pigeonhole principle again this is just pigeonhole now without loss of generality assume assume infinitely many terms infinitely many points of xn xn is in b11 okay now it is trivial it is trivial to find find a subsequence subsequence x and k such that x and k is in b11 okay now what you do is let let a1 be an element of this subsequence okay so choose a1 to be any element of this subsequence now what you do is that now is the tricky point of the proof what you do is note that b uh, 1 2 b 2 2 dot 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 b uh, m 2 2 i hope i got the notation right yes b m 2 2 covers covers k again right covers k again this just means that infinitely many terms infinitely many terms terms of uh, x and k is in b 1 2 again it will be there in one of these b uh, i mean the infinitely many terms of x and k will either be in b 1 2 or b 2 2 or b m 2 i'm just renaming these balls and assuming that it's in b 1 2 there's nothing really deep happening here okay again we can find we can find 
we can find a subsequence subsequence of x and k x and k in k uh, x and k in b12 okay now what you do is choose choose a2 from this subsequence from this subsequence such that a2 appears to the right of a1 to the right of a1 in the original sequence in the original sequence fine now repeating this process repeating this process repeating this process we get we get a subsequence subsequence of xn and by by our selection procedure by our selection procedure it is immediate it is immediate that <coughs> it is immediate that this sequence an that we have chosen is cauchy now by completeness by completeness completeness an must converge remember an was a subsequence of the original sequence we have shown that it converges and it must converge to an element element in k simply because k is complete proving this proves k is sequentially compact sequentially compact so a bit of work is required for this part you have to consecutively choose these terms an in such a way that it's a cauchy sequence right the converse on the other hand is quite easy converse is easy <coughs> converse is easy suppose k subset of x is compact it's compact then then it is certainly closed it is closed and total boundedness is easy you just use the fact that any cover of k with balls of radius epsilon will have a finite subcover and total boundedness total boundedness boundedness is immediate so this concludes the proof of the hein borel theorem for metric spaces again i urge you to show that uh, i mean to come up with many examples of non totally bounded sets so let me conclude by an with giving a notion that's very useful this is called the notion of relatively compact a set k subset of x is said to be relatively compact relatively compact if k closure is compact okay and we have an immediate corollary we have an immediate corollary of hein borel theorem it says any totally bounded set totally bounded subset k of a complete metric space complete metric space is relatively compact and the proof is rather easy or corral all corollaries are usually very easy so fix epsilon greater than 0 by the total boundedness of k we can find finitely many balls finitely many balls of radius radius epsilon by 2 that covers k 
that covers okay this is just the total boundedness it is immediate it is immediate that immediate that the same that the balls of radius epsilon radius epsilon with the same centers with the same centers same centers cover k closure so this statement might seem a bit cryptic i don't want to belabor what is essentially an easy point what i want to say is you have finitely many balls of radius epsilon by 2 that covers k just take these balls and uh, delete the divider by 2 just take the very same balls but double the radius the same centers those will have to cover k closure that's a rather easy thing to prove now the hein borel theorem finishes the proof the hein borel theorem finishes the proof so k closure will be closed and totally bounded and therefore uh, will be compact so this concludes the proof of the hein borel theorem as i have remarked several times please do come up with several examples of non totally bounded sets this is a clo uh, this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the video on the hein borel theorem Thank you.